let's take a look at graphing another piecewise function. So this function is defined by three different functions on three different intervals. So we're going to do the same thing that we did last time. We're going to look at our different functions on the different intervals, um, evaluate our functions at their endpoints, and then fill in any gaps in between using information from our function if we can. Okay, so this first graph has uh, endpoints. It doesn't, it's not like all values less than something. So it's all values of x in between negative 3 and 1, including negative 3. So let's go ahead and just um, evaluate negative 2x plus 1 at our endpoints and see what those values are. So negative 2 times negative 3 plus 1, that's a positive 6, plus 1 is 7. Uh, so that gives us the ordered pair negative 3, 7. And that's the first point, right? That's what we get from here. And then at the other end point over that interval, we would get negative 2 times 1 plus 1. That's negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So we would get the ordered pair. So when we plugged in 1 for x, we got negative 1 for the y. Uh, and that's that end point there. Now, if we were to go and graph these, we can see that this here, you can see here, it's less than or equal to. So that means that at negative 3, 7, it's going to be included in the graph. Negative 3, 7, that point is going to be included in the graph. So it's going to be a closed circle. But here at 1, it's not going to be included because it's strictly less than. So at 1, negative 1, we have an open circle here. We have an open circle there. It's a little bit like that. Now we could use this graph to find other points in between by using the slope. So it's a negative slope of negative two. So we can go down two, right one, down two, right one, and we can continue to do that. And you would see that we would end up where our uh, open circle indicates. And because this is a closed interval, it's not saying that it goes off forever like this one does. We can't draw this forever and use an arrow. It's going to stop here at the point negative 3, 7. So it's going from negative 3, 7 just up until this point here at 1, negative 1. So that's the first one. So we're done with that. Um, let's take a look at the second function. So it's f of x equals 2 uh, if x is equal to 1. So this is simply saying that if our graph is equal to 1, or sorry, if x is equal to 1, the y value is 2. So if x is 1, the y value is 2. Well, that's just an ordered pair. So this really is just yielding the ordered pair 1, 2. And then that's it. We're done with that one. Uh, and then the last one is this quadratic function. And that happens for all values of x greater than 1. So at 1, it's not going to be included. But we still want to look at 1 so that we know what value it would be approaching. And then for all values to the right of 1 on the number line, it's going to be defined by that quadratic x squared. So if I plug 1 into my function, 1 squared, that's 1. Um, plug 2 into the function, 2 squared is 4. And we can just continue this, and we would see that we get the points 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, etc. Um, so like I said, when x is greater than 1 is what this interval is defined on. So when x is equal to 1, that point of 1 is going to be not included. So we have to use an open circle here. Um, at 2, though, it is defined. So 2, 4, we get a closed circle here. And then 3, 9 would be somewhere up here. And if you know what the graph of this quadratic looks like, um, it does go through the origin normally. But the interval to the left of negative 1 is not defined. So it's not going to go through here. But it would have this, uh, it would look like a U kind of shape. So it's going to look something like this. That's really bad. It's going to look something like this. And so that's going to be our piecewise defined function and its graph.